Hello guys and welcome back to episode 3 of Project Monaco with me, Pug Gaming. And wow, again, a huge, huge thank you to everyone who spent time to watch episode 2 of The Port Hercules. It was fantastic to see how many of you have been watching the video and also to read your comments. I've been really enjoying hearing your feedback. A few people who actually live quite local to Monaco also are watching the series which is absolutely fantastic. I'll be extremely interested in hearing your thoughts on how this progresses. But we must move on and in episode two, as you can see from these cinematics, we completed the main part of the harbour. This is the part that houses most of the uh, activity of the harbour and ships. We got the passenger line in the corner there and well, we detailed this and now it's pretty much time to move on to the next part of the harbour which is where all the fancy buildings commence and we are going to start straight away with this huge complex created by just the one asset creator and that is Renewcom and this is sensational. A little bit of a puzzle to put together but my word did he put a lot of effort into this creating not just one asset but five, yes five, to complete this particular complex. And it's now available in the workshop, so if you want to check this out, you can use these individually or together as a complex such as this. And my word, look at the detail levels of these. These are absolutely stunning. They are pure replicas of what you see on the harbour front. And we'll get to see a bit of that a bit later on once we get this all placed down and put nice and pretty. So you may have missed it earlier in the time lapse, but the first job of this process was to create the ground level to be as flat as possible, smoothing out the terrain and making it all nice and lovely and flat. Next job was then to piece these items together because they were designed as a one construction and then split into parts to be able to be um, absorbed within the game. And what you'll see here as well is Renewcom also created a very nice Monaco based roadway which is, allows you to raise it up and it's got these beautiful stone um, textures beneath it as well and the reason for that you can see a bit better now in this clip that the height of these buildings is different so the front end against the actual harbour front is a lot lower down than the other side so that's due to obviously the terrains in uh, Monaco in this particular area on the harbour front so using the road we're able to raise up that area because it is a road behind it anyway and basically you lose a bit of um, a bit of the building itself but uh, that is what it is and it worked extremely well. Next job was to create this little swinging down area from the road into the passenger terminal so this road leads you in to the passenger terminal where you can park and drop off etc. And I needed to create a bit of a raised area here and using Los Gecko as a source of creativity he created these beautiful Monaco retaining walls and these beautiful little side wall pillars. And both assets will be released on the workshop so you can certainly have some fun with those. The walls are both a low try and high try count I believe. I think both will be released in the workshop so make sure you go and check those out. Now I promised you a lot of custom buildings today and we've already seen five of them by Renewcom. And up next we have the Fort Antoine Theatre by Creepy Eyes. And this creation was actually one of the first created for the Monaco series and wow did it set a very good example of the quality that I was going to get beyond this. And what I love best about all of these unique buildings that I've been receiving, working on with asset creators, is each one it allows me to look into it, find out a little bit more about it and what it's there for. And this actual fort was actually a fort <laughs> um, back in the 18th century. Um, and it was destructed back in 1944, where the prince at the time I had the fortress rebuilt and set as a theatre in 1953. And what I do love about this is even though it was rebuilt, they've kept some of the architecture the same. So you'll see the little um, Bartesian um, tower just creeping out of the actual um, theatre itself. And that's one of the resemblances of what it was once before. 
But not just that, but there also is a stack of cannonballs as well to really show off that this was once used in a sort of war scenario. But anyway, back to the build. The Theatius itself, as you saw, was quite an easy placement in the end. Um, nicely done, there is a road that goes underneath it and luckily Creepy added that in as well, so it's a lot easier to, to work with now. So we just joined the two roads up and that was that. Now what we're doing here is we're using King Leno's um, assets here to create a walkway and car park on top of the um, first part of the um, tiered buildings. So the issue we had here was we needed to create a little area on top and obviously it couldn't be a workable area because of how the uh, asset has been built by Renewcom. So what we wanted to do here, and luckily in real life it is just a little car park space here. So we just wanted to add the uh, plopper assets down, asphalts down first. And just make this into a sort of a parking lot area. Sort of resemble as best we can that zone which we'll see on the screen just now. So now is a bit of time for a bit of detailing. And I must say that this area isn't exactly as you see it. Um, in real life it's a little bit less um, well less beautified I guess but obviously being a city skylines build I wanted to create a bit of beauty within this little area here um, it's a lot more run down from what I've seen in real life so we're just trying to tart it up a little bit here just make things look a little bit nicer So with that detailed we actually have something that we can look at and resemble this beautiful part of the Monaco Pier Hercules. Now as you can see there is the beautiful fort in the backgrounds and as we move over you can see the car park and those cars and that does look really nice and I've dropped down an image on the bottom right hand corner as well of the screen to show you what we're trying to compare against. So as you can see as we swing round here as well, you can see those beautiful buildings. And I wasn't lying, they are absolutely identical to what you see in real life. A real pleasure to have a creator of that ability on board and have these assets built for this series. And actually from the comparison video, the only thing that is lacking on that sort of landscape view is the height of the terrain. And this is gonna be something I'll be doing a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, over the up-and-coming videos um, getting the terrain to the correct height is going to be extremely difficult because one it needs to be playable and two it still needs to look realistic so we um, reduce the height of this um, mountain area here a little bit further down so we can uh, make it look a little bit more realistic and what we're using here is we're using the beautiful um, Vanya's cliffs as well purposely built for Monaco so they again will be on the workshop for you to 
use yourself and they do look really nice I wanted to add these because although the theme itself has some nice cliffs I think these work even better so that's why we decided to go with those over the standard theme but the theme also stays we're not going to do all of the cliffs with Vanya's um, beautiful work just the corners just over here now one thing I was having trouble with is due to the mechanics of the game and the way the roads drop themselves down there is a gap between the road and where this cliff starts which you can't see from all angles obviously if you're looking directly down you can but from this angle you can't really notice it that badly so we might keep it like that unless I can think of another way of doing so we could put the uh, probable asphalt down there but it sounds like a waste of, um, of a prop count as well so what we're doing here we're just trying to fill out the um, cliff faces themselves because if you look in real life there's a lot of sort of greenery and shrubs coming out of the rocks themselves and then obviously the big tree line on top of that to create that beautiful uh, landscape we're used to seeing now going back to the issue with the gap between the roads I did decide to put some of the grass down there as well which you'll see shortly just just to create a bit of a you know a bit of a sway between the two there you can you can see the gap a bit and it was a bit distracting me so we'll just put down some of the uh, long grass down there just to um, also add to the greenery in this area but to sort of cover up that gap itself <laughs> So let's jump out of that cinematic, at least it gives you an idea on where we are with this episode and we're going to move into what you all enjoy watching and I enjoy doing myself personally. It's time to detail this area. Now this area is full of a lot of different varieties, there's a few things, there's a park, there's a lot of restaurants, you've got the um, Harbour Master area as well. And there's a lot of boats docked up on the side as well. So we're going to get through all that. We're going to start off firstly by laying down the road. 
So the issue I did have prior to laying down this road, as you would have seen at the end of episode one, was we could have used smaller lane roads to create a nice area. But when you do that, you normally, and what I found was having the two roads next to each other, if they are single roads, that is, they do cause a bit of a destruction in between the two of them. And what I mean by that is it's not smooth. You can try and add over probable asphalt to try and um, remove or mask that area, but it just seemed a lot easier for me to use this road. And I do love this road. It's a really nice texture as well. Um, so not only do we get a nice texture, uh, we can also use the traffic president to, um, to reroute the traffic itself. But I'm not too fussed about that because there's not really a lot of traffic that goes on in this particular area. So we'll probably leave things as they are. Um, we will make this area come to life in probably episode five or maybe six, depending on how long it takes to complete the harbour area. But there will be activity going on. I know a lot of you in the last video were mentioning you wanted to see people walking around and some vehicles and boats moving around. That will happen. And I'm working with Mick at the moment to... Uh, try and find a good solution to create a few nice surprises for you in the, in the long run. So what we're working on first is to put down some car parking spaces. So I've tried to copy the format as best as I could, um, which seems to be a mixture of car parks and storage for boats, which are um, sitting on the docks themselves um, as opposed to being in the actual water so it's more of a sort of storage location out here and we've obviously got the beautiful cranes as well which will be added a bit later on which are able to put the boats into the water themselves so we're using a combination of um, the casas um, beautiful um, parking bays and flooring just to create a different sort of area um, i wanted to try and try and create a few different textures in this zone here um, the roads and the docks themselves do look different in real life we can't match it perfectly but I like the combination we've achieved uh, with these ones here so whilst we place down the rest of the parking spaces just wanted to take this moment to do a few shout outs and obviously if you're a fan of the series make sure you're following me on social media so that's Facebook Twitter and also Instagram as well I've also got a Discord which is dedicated for my channel and there's a special area for the Monaco stuff. Lots of teasers and other bits as bobs as well. So check out the links in the description below. I've also opened up a Patreon page as well where you're more than welcome to throw me a few pounds here and there. If you want to, of course, that's not a necessity. I'll be continuing these videos for the long run. But I do have a few ideas on what to do with that extra cash if possible and a lot of them were from comments in the last series a lot of people were suggesting that have i actually been to monaco before and if not it'll be a good thing to go towards the end of the series and sort of see my creation in real life so that would be a very nice achievement if we can get some money together for a trip over to monaco where i could probably do some sort of a um podcast or in real life sort of a video um, diary and we can go across to all the areas show off the buildings that were created by the creators and just sort of have some fun so if you are able to do so that would be most welcome otherwise your support is always always welcome in just likes and comments on the video to show that the video is ticking all the boxes and you're enjoying it so keep me posted on your comments guys what else would you like to see what else would you want me to do and any other questions really i'm always here to listen and see what you guys are up to as well so with that out of the way let's get back to the build and we're back in perfect timing to place down these beautiful cranes again created by the king of harbors mick crosswell we are placing these down in as close as possible to the spots they are actually on the harbour so obviously we'll see a bit later on there'll be some um, boats that we put down here but this is provisionally the area where boats will be lifted in and out of the um, sea to be fixed to be moved or to be replaced 
Last week we were blessed with over 12, I think, new boats to the workshop. And this week we're blessed again, but they're boats on stands. Again, by Mick Cross Hill, we've got a beautiful number of different variety boats with also some nice little props to go with them. So we've got the boats themselves here that have the uh, stands already built in, but he's also released some prop stands as well. So you can put those across the harbor to resemble that there was once a boat there. So again, we are blessed with a lot of nice assets this week from the series. Now, once thing, well, one thing I was actually thinking about, I'm uh, not sure whether anyone would know who's watching, but this little area always kind of confuses me. In terms of the fact of, are these boats meant to be here all the time, or is this like a short-term location? It doesn't really seem a safe sort of area to keep your boats in. I'm sure it is anyway, it's Monaco for example, but um, be interesting to know whether these boats are here continuously, is it the same ones all the time? Or are they just here, like I say, in the short term for, you know, moving into the water, etc. Because obviously they've got to take turns to do so. Um, it'd be interesting to find out. But what we're doing here, we're just making this area come alive a little bit. There's some nice boat trailers on the workshop. And again, Mick has released a number of other ones. I think there's two more that are being released um, this week on the workshop. So make sure you check those out. They can be used for a lot of different varieties in terms of props. So now just filling out the car parks here. Um, they're not obviously gonna be functional, but um, we don't want them to be really. We just want them to be as they are. So just a few down here, uh, motorbikes going down as well. And one thing that I am lacking at the moment, which hopefully we can work on for the workshop is some prop mopeds. Um, very, very highly used in Mediterranean towns and cities and across the whole of Europe, to be honest. They're obviously a cheap means of transport, especially when you think about Monaco, the lack of space to park your car, let alone to live in, really would warrant having a moped over a vehicle. So if there's anyone who can create any nice moped assets and props, that'll be a great addition to the workshop. But for now, we're gonna jump into a quick time lapse just whilst we detail this front area and we'll catch up very shortly.
and welcome back. That is the majority of the detail done for the left hand side of this area. Just putting in this small little park here. Um, and one thing I found a little bit difficult when it comes to working with Monaco, as I said to you before, there's not a lot of um, information and data um, when it comes to the Monaco area, when it comes to maps and 3D images. So um, there's a lot of areas in the UK, for example, where you can jump onto Google Maps, Street View, and see everything nice and clear. Monaco is a little bit more reserved in that sense, and it probably makes sense because it is a bit more of a secure location with a lot of people who have a lot of money. Um, so there are some areas where we aren't able to see exactly what we need to to replicate it. Um, so there are a few areas that we have had to not make up, but you know, work with what we've got and sort of try and imagine what it would look like. But that adds to the inspiration of this build and I'm more than happy to work on something myself as well. So that little park area there, um, we've plopped down and one thing I have noticed as well, looking through a number of different um, areas, um, sorry, different time eras of um, this particular um, part of the harbour, they actually resemble a lot of different events. So when the Formula One is on, this whole harbour is looking completely different to what it does now and vice versa to little events that happen as well. Um, I did remember seeing one where there was a little five-a-side football pitch um, mounted upon the concrete further up as well. So they do adapt this area to its surroundings and make the most of it, which um, I think is really, really smart. Now this little area here that we just plopped down these two Mediterranean buildings, there is actually an underpass that goes beneath that. Um, and obviously the issue I've got is because I'm using this road as a double road when really it should be a single, we're not able to um, recreate the under passage that goes beyond this. So we've just left it as it is. We've still created the look of where it would go down with the fences either side, but we're not able to do it exactly. Um, but I think we can get away with that. Um, we could have redone the road. It would have taken a bit of time and I did have a little play off camera and it was gonna be a very difficult task to do so. So I think this is the best of the um, best of the best scenario, I guess, to do so. And again, to add to the realism, I wanted to sort of hide the fact that this was a much larger road than what I'm trying to represent it as. So we used the proper asphalt put a nice decal on top of that and some curbs around it so it kind of looks like it's a curved pavement area um, and again using our imagination in the end we're going to create this into a little bit of a sort of cafe area as well so that all looks a lot better a lot more tidier just putting these little bits in here and there um, just adds to the realism again and makes things look a lot nicer. And just before we call it a day, let's have a little bit of a live play overview at what we've done today. So look at that, I really do love that asset. It pops out beautifully. Texture levels of this are outrageously good. And I really like this tiered area here. I didn't know how this was gonna to come together um, when I first started to work on it, but it's done its job and the probable asphalt has saved me once again as it does with a lot of creations that I work on. This backside here I really do love the tiered uh, sort of tiered location of this building and now things are detailed it does really have a breath of life. Things are looking extremely nice now in Monaco and I'm really excited to see where this goes next. And I also placed this little um, sort of cafe area uh, with some tents over top just to add a bit of variation to the other side. There is actually a building I think that's now built there in real life, but from the maps I was working from that wasn't there. So that's how that works for the time being. And we've got these beautiful boats as well from Mick Cross Hill sitting strongly on their stands. And it just shows you what a difference it makes when you start adding props down and really making things come to life. And that, my friends, does bring us to the end of episode three of Project Monaco. As always, guys, I am super thrilled that you are sticking around to see where this project goes. Again, 
I'm trying to release as many episodes as quickly as I possibly can, but the quality of the editing and video consumption, as well as my daily work life, does mean that one to two weeks is turnaround time, normally a little bit over a week. But it keeps you thinking, it keeps you active, and it's always good to hear from you in the comments in between each episode. So I'm going to say goodbye now. I'll finish on some beautiful cinematics and we'll catch up again in episode four where we'll be working on the main side of the harbour right by the swimming pool. Okay guys, thank you for your time and I'll see you all again very, very soon. <laughs>